This is probably part one of a two-part message, most likely. And uh, it's and it's all about um, perseverance. And um, so I call it perseverance factors, or how to persevere, how to persevere. I notice that all the Western cultures have a border crisis. I think many European countries are further down the line than we are, and they're having a lot of chaos as they open their border up to many people with very different cultures, some third world, and it's a lot of chaos, like what you heard happen then, in spite of what ABC News says, Springfield, Ohio. And crime is up. And I think what we're facing, and you're going to say, how come all the Western countries are having the same problem? The obvious answer is someone behind the scene is pushing everybody in the same direction. Um, you could call them globalists. But what I think they want to do is destabilize the world, and then they're going to recreate it, and they they might not call it a global communist movement, but some new version of socialist superstate. And who is behind all that? The person behind, the people behind, is Satan. I can just sense it. Um, I know I don't know that, but I feel it. They're destabilizing the whole world. And what we're going to see in the future from these people is a false peace, a lull and a quiet. We'll talk more about that next week as well. But it is a danger to us. It is a spiritual danger to all of us. It's a real threat to us. I want to read a scripture that I'm kind of building this on, 2 Peter 3.3. 3. So this is 2 Peter 3.3 3 and the New King James Version. Knowing this first, that the scoffers will come in the last days. In other words, in the end time, they're going to scoff at the idea of a second coming of Jesus Christ and the end of the age we live in. Things are going to go on like they've always been. People have always said Christ is going to, and they'll be right, people have often said Christ is going to come back, and it hasn't happened yet at some point in the future. Um, and they'll be walking according to their own lust. In other words, they're doing it because they're sinners and they don't want God in their life. Um, and where is the promise of his coming? You know, they've got to get all excited about that sort of thing. And I think this false lull is going to happen because something will set it up where they'll have this false lull. Philippians 4.1 Therefore, my beloved, long for brethren, may joy my joy and crown. Stand fast in the Lord. Paul says stand fast. So no matter what happens, even if there's a lull, where the whole world assumes that Christ isn't really going to come back, we kind of know the truth. It isn't going to go that way. Uh, Paul says stand fast. People are going to believe there is no end time. Um, this evil age is not going to come to an end. People are going to believe it. And the fact that it's mentioned in Luke 21, Matthew 24, and a few other places, it's going to have a big effect. And they're going to get the whole world moving in the same direction. You might have heard the Pope said, all religions lead to one God. That's a big statement for a leader of a specific Christian church. Can you see how that can lead the way to one super leader and a super religious guy says, I'm the way, follow me, and everything goes on. You know, they may have some more iterations and you know, twists and turns, but you can see it moving in that direction. We have to be you know, kind of fired up to stay where we are, even though the world's going to see it differently. Philippians 4.8. Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, 
whatever things are good report. If there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Even though the world's going to have some evil twist, probably the loss of religious freedom, uh, or at least varying degrees of it, stay positive, stay focused on being a biblical Christian. Um, 1 Timothy 6.12 Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called. Now, hold on. Like, hold on. Because it won't just get pressure to not hold on. It will also be tricky and sneaky and deceptive. Um, also call and confess the good confession in the presence of many. 1 Timothy 6.19 Storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come. That they may lay hold on eternal life. So hold on to eternal life. Persevere. I think it'll be a little bit like a long distance runner. Um, many of you probably had this experience. You volunteer for some sport like cross country and you're not really built for it. You get out in the lead. First half a mile, you're out in front. And then your body kicks in and says, ah, oh, this hurts. And well, Anyway, um, so you just can't sprint your way for miles and miles. You have to pace yourself. It's going to be, when I say a long distance run, even if the end is eight or nine or ten years away, it's still a long distance in some respects. And it could be less, could be more. What we have to do is not burn out. What we have to do is not burn out. Remember, stay the course against the tide, because the tide of the world is going to be pushing us toward one world leader, one world religion, and a lot of ungodly things to accept. I would listen to this college professor discussing how they're forcing, and this is at a state college, by the way, um, and they're forcing him to accept things that deny Christianity, to put, he has to go through a course and Accept a lot of things that then they're going to put a rainbow sticker on his office door and everybody else probably in that faculty will have a rainbow sticker on their door except him. He quit the course because of some of the crazy things they asked him to accept. Um, like, for instance, unlimited sexual genders. Whatever somebody can dream up. That's what it is. Anything. So it's unlimited. You know, they may come up with all kinds of on, off, on, off, this, that. Uh, no sex, by Anyway, we'll go to all the variations. But things that he said, wait a minute. I can't accept this. I could go into more things. But I want to tell this stupid story called senior driving. A senior citizen was driving down the freeway. And his car phone rang. And his wife called him. She said, uh, she was trembling and warning him, Herman, I just heard on the News 6 that there's a car going the wrong way on Interstate 77. Aren't you on Interstate 77? He says, yes. Well, she says, please be careful. <laughs> he says, whoa, says Herman. It's not just one car going the wrong way. It's hundreds of them. <laughs> hundreds of them going the wrong way. Well... <clears throat> We might at some times have to buck the trends. Everybody is going the wrong way. And we have to, and as crazy as that sounds, we have to persevere for truth, pace ourselves. Um, one of the things that I recommend in staying the course is keeping the Sabbath, coming to church every week, if you can. Many people, it's not going to be able to come every week, or depending on where you are, but at least keep the Sabbath every week. It's like a shot in the arm for doing the right thing. Like, you know, long races have these rest stations. At least some races they do. They give you a little bit of water and you can rest for a few minutes before you go back out on the... Uh, anyway, some of those Olympic runs are really like 20, one of them is 26 miles. Whoa! That's from Greece, if you might remember. He ran to tell them in Athens they had won. And he had to get back. There's a little story behind it. When he finally got to Greece, he yelled, Nike, which is, I believe, victory in Greece. And that's how they got the big, long run that you hear of in the Olympics. Anyway, but 
You need that rest station. And every week, like regular order, you get together, you read your Bible, you give time to God, and you get rejuvenated. And we need to do that. Um, and do it over and over and over every week, no matter what. Um, and so like a pep talk every week. 1 Corinthians 9.27. 1 Corinthians 9, 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself might be a castaway. And, I, and the word self-discipline, I'm going to kind of combine it with, with something else here, but he says you've got to discipline yourself to keep the Sabbath. Discipline yourself to repent and watch events, even when, you know, the, the world has got all these distracting movies and whatever they've got distracting things going on. Uh, Revelation 3.3. 3. I'm combining this with self-discipline. Remember, therefore, Revelation 3.3, 3, how you have received and heard and hold fast and repent. Now, this is a church where a lot of people have fallen asleep and just lost it. Their Christianity is questionable. But... Um, Christ is saying, for those of you that still have it, that are still holding on to your Christianity, um, Christ is saying, hold fast, hold on tight, and repent. In other words, try to get back to a better attitude. And that takes self-discipline to hold on and repent. If you therefore shall not watch, and you have to watch events too, I will come on you as a thief, and you shall not know the hour I will come. In other words, it's going to be a surprise when Christ comes back, and you had better be reasonably ready, reasonably holding on, or you may not make it. So we have to watch society. It takes some discipline to keep watching it. Too much news may be discouraging, but a little bit, and watch churches and things like that. But I say watch events, but watch with knowledge. Now you're going to say, what do I mean by watch with knowledge? What I mean by watch with knowledge is, based on the scripture we started off with, but others, we should expect a false lull to happen in the future, a false celebration, a new Pax Romana. You know, they, and there were times when the Roman Empire did bring the world in unity and peace, and I give them credit for that. Like one man said, from the border of Scotland all the way through North Africa, a big chunk of Central, Western, and Eastern Europe to most of the Middle East except for Iran. Uh, and all North Africa was under. You could use one currency. You didn't have to cross any borders. Uh, most of the time, the sea lanes were free. Um, and they had law and order and courts. Uh, you had peace in the world called Pax Romana. Well, can you see some future Holy Roman Empire leader in Central Europe, 10 kings, maybe five kind of Western and five kind of Eastern, and we could speculate about who's in which group and how, and some dictator and, and a false prophet helps sell him, and, and, and they'll take total control of the media, of course, and you'll only hear what they want you to hear. Be no misinformation. Uh, you know, that's what they're trying to get in Europe, and they, I think they arrested the guy running Telegraph, I think it's Telegraph or Telegram, because he has too much free speech on there, and they've uh, threatened Elon Musk in Europe. I'm not exactly sure what will happen in that situation, but they don't want anything they don't want you to hear. They'll have total control of all media, and with great propagandists and their version of Hollywood, you'll only see him as a great godlike figure. And whatever their policies are, they're right. And anybody who disagrees ought to be thrown in the, whatever they call the re-education camps. Uh, and you know they have those in various in the sundry dictatorships. Well, that'll be this false utopia. And uh, you want to call it a new world order. He'll say we have a modern day Pax Romana. When it happens... Most of the world say, well, this is wonderful. We have reunited churches. They're all supporting him. 
He may give them some freedom of worship and style, but they're all supporting the one basic religious tenets, the one great leader and his super pope or whatever title he takes. And uh, we will know, and, and they'll try to cut off buying and selling unless you're supporting the program. And uh, actually with, <laughs> with central bank digital currency and maybe even additional technologies, it's gonna, they're gonna have a lot of power you can just imagine what it will be like. And when it happens, instead of celebrating with the rest of the world, we will know to beware. This is a false peace, a false peace. It will not last. Um, and shortly thereafter, Christ will be coming too. And also we have to have a soft heart um, because the world will also be getting more carnal. Christ says the world will get colder and people will betray one another. Um, here's a possibility about the world getting cold, but I can see what like certain people did during COVID. They have hotlines where neighbors can betray their neighbors. He wasn't following you, all your rules of how you should worship or whatever you were, were supposed to do that you didn't do. Or we've been watching your patterns of eating and shopping. Some, you're not going along with the program. They'll turn you in. Um, and people will be cruel. Even people turning in their parents I mean, and, and, and cousins and uncles, cold and mean. And uh, we have to hold on to a soft, loving heart in a world that's cold. Hebrews 3.8. Harden not your hearts, Hebrews 3, 8, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Further down, Hebrews 3, 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So we have to hold on and persevere, but hold on to a soft heart. I can see people, when you tell them about some of the cruel aspects of of um, abortion, like late-term abortion, where they put pull the baby's brain out just enough that they can still say technically it's in the mother, and they take scissors, and I won't give you more detail. But there are a lot of people you would they used to say abortion rare and safe. They don't care, or they try to deny that. By the way, you know they denied in the last debate there is no um, abortion up to the time of birth. And they denied it. I heard a clarification. I believe it. There are 21 mostly blue states where it is still allowed. People are that cruel. And in some, even though they denied it, it because you have to open up the cervix with certain drugs for that late term abortion, some of the babies just pop out like 20%. And they're out of the mother before they get a chance to whack it. And you know what they do in a lot of cases? They denied it. They decide, well, what do we want to do? We want to let this baby die. They can do that simply by neglect. Or they can kill it right then. And by the way, you know, a guy gave a, uh, some secret videos on how they were letting babies go, because they're almost totally there. And uh, they would kill these babies and sell the baby parts to research labs for money. And Delighton is the guy that did it. And the prosecutor, once he had those emails revealed, the prosecutor that went after him for years to punish him for revealing that was the person that's now running for president. And she did all kinds of things that raid his home. I get but the point I want to get at is, but you would think everybody would be upset about that. People have become cold-hearted and this accepted. I want a woman to have the rights to abort. It's her body. Actually, technically, a baby is not the woman's body. Now, the baby, the woman is hosting the baby, and I'm not saying that's not a tough thing for women, so I'm not putting, I'm not trying to make pregnancy easy. But technically, the baby could have a different blood type, certainly will have different fingerprints, and his genetics will be different. Similar, but different. It is a different, it's a unique individual inside mommy. May not even look that much like her, depending on other, you know, going to the genes, but the point is, it's not her body, 
and um, oh well. But the left is hypocritical. When it came time for certain other procedures the lady didn't want, we could care less about what you want. It's what the government wants. We could care less about your body, your right. But verse 15, uh, Hebrews 3, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. So we'll have to, as the future goes on, hold on to Christian values, but try to hold on to a soft, kind heart. Um, uh, and what they might do, I can see it. People get so cruel. If you don't go along with the program, we're going to report you to the ministry of whatever they may call it, maybe a re-education, and they'll send you to re-education camp. By the way, that happened to people in Vietnam because one of the families involved was a student of mine, and it was just interesting as they talked about how her dad had to go to the re-education camp. It was nothing but a cruel gulag run by the Communist Party, and actually what they did to them was terrible. They had a family move next to them, was real friendly to them, to, to feel out how they like communism. And of course, the family set them up with friends. Then they squealed on them. They really don't like this communist regime. And off the dad goes to the, quote, re-education camp. He finally got out, and they escaped. A really harrowing story how they escaped in a boat. Got to Hong Kong and eventually to America. And they're doing well in a land of religious freedom and political freedom. And I hope we can keep it. We will see, I guess, how the world goes in that regard. But can you see the cruelty of people? Yeah, I'm going to turn in so-and-so because that's not going along with the program. You, you can just think of the mindset. Or maybe it's one of my cousins. And I know by things they've said and done, they're not going along with this. They're not worshiping the man there in Rome or Jerusalem, wherever he may be at the moment. They're not really worshiping him. They got some crazy ideas. I'm going to turn them in. And they will do that. Of course, they did that in, in the Soviet Union and in uh, Mussolini's world, but also in the Nazi regime in Germany. People turn others in. And you can just see that attitude of, let's set up a hotline where you can turn in your friends and relatives. And in school, encourage kids to rat out their parents. Just think of it. But I believe that kind of evil will be coming. Um, and so as we look at factors that will help us hold on, um, I encourage you never to get too high because that's like running too fast in a long race. Let's say if somebody comes along and says, I'm sure I know when the... Well, the tribulation starts. I'm sure I know when the place of safety time starts. I'm sure I know when the beast is going to take the temple in Jerusalem. I'm sure I know when Christ is going to come back. And I've heard some dates kicked out by one guy, 1928 or 1929. Something bad will probably happen to America in those years, especially if the wrong people get elected. But don't get too excited about any specific dates. The Bible overall tends to, we might know general uh, patterns of prophecy, but specifics, the Bible implies that, no, you can't know how slow things are going to go or how fast they're going to go. You just don't know. And it may all be up to the Father, and he maybe hasn't decided yet how bad things are. But regardless, um, just don't get too excited. Like, oh, it's going to happen. All I got to do is two more years. Well, let's say you get all excited. And, and we know a number of groups that have done things like that. We'll all be going to places of safety in a year or so. Well, those dates come and go and they have excuses. And then the next year it's coming and they have excuses. What do you think is happening to those groups? At least some of them, at least one we know from some emails they just sent out. We talked about it before the podcast. Their people are bailing out because they're so disillusioned. They're quitting everything. In other words, they're not just quitting their leadership and the bad organization. They're throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Like, I don't believe in anything anymore. I just give up. Kind of go with the world. See, that's what happens when you get disillusioned. So if somebody is absolutely sure he knows, I would say, eh, don't get too excited. 
He may think he knows, he may know something, and a few things may work out, but I, I think the specifics, because uh, the Bible has Matthew 25, but I can rattle off a bunch of other scriptures, that it's going to catch a lot of us by surprise. Not totally by surprise, those that are watching, but there will be some surprises. So don't get your hopes up about any particular date, don't, because you get disillusioned. So, as we come toward the end of this message, and we'll, if possible, expand on this in part two next time. Uh, but here's the basics of what I'm saying. Remember, a false lull is a threat to us, and a false lull is probably coming. When people will say things like, Christ has delayed his coming, you know, that's in Matthew 24, Luke 21, I believe it's in Mark as well. Well, maybe he's delayed his coming or you just thought you knew when he was coming and you got uh, undercut. Uh, but though people will think that. Can you see where that's dangerous to think? He's not coming to way, way, way in the future. I could run wild and go along with the world because it's not going to happen in my lifetime. Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. No one knows for sure. Um, Secondly, be on guard against deception. The deception that says, there'll never be an end of this evil age. People have always thought the Messiah is coming back, but it isn't going to happen. And they'll get a large chunk of the world to believe that. Your face should be in the man. He's probably there in Rome or wherever his capital will be or, or Jerusalem. And, you know, he's the man and the world is, at least the Western world, is all kind of united behind him. Keep the Sabbath every week and kind of reinforce what we know. Um, use self-discipline to avoid evil things that will hearten our hearts or get us to stop watching. Kind of like, oh, I won't watch anymore because prophecy bothers me and we can never be sure. And most of all, keep a soft heart. But we watch, but we want to watch prophecy smartly. Smartly. And so that means we got to expect a false peace, a Pax Romana or some modern day version. And all that will happen before sudden end time events will change things. <laughs>